Our next guest was the former U.S. attorney for the Southern District of New York, where he prosecuted close to 100 Wall Street executives for insider trading and other crimes. He was also famously fired after refusing to comply with a Trump administration order to resign, which led to his next career, podcast host and now author. His new book, <laughs> Doing Justice, A Prosecutor's Thoughts on Crime, Punishment, and the Rule of Law. Preet Bharara joins us now. You're kind of like now sort of a member of the media, a yes. little bit. But not fake news. Not fake news, <laughs> no. yes. We are not real, fake news real media. either. This is the real news. Uh, let's talk about your book, which Please, when okay. I first heard about it, I thought, oh, this is just going to be, it's going to be all Trump all the time. No. Got it. I read it. It's really not about Trump at all. Who are you hoping that this book is for, and what do you want them to take away from it? I hope it's for everybody. You know, you might think from the seriousness of the title and the seriousness of my former title, that it's meant for lawyers or people who uh, are in the criminal justice system. It's really not. Uh, my hope was to sort of discuss through the stories of the cases that I oversaw or did personally when I was in office, explain to people how justice is done, how they might make decisions, uh, how they might be good leaders, how they might engage in moral reasoning. Uh, because everybody, whether you're a lawyer or a prosecutor or not, if you're in business or you're in journalism or you work at a school or you work uh, at a, at a business, you have to make judgments about people, you have to make judgments about punishment, you have to make judgments about disciplining your own kids sometimes. And all of those decisions really come down to issues of truth and fairness and the right thing. And so I hope that there are lessons in the book through the stories that I tell for all people. You know, I've been thinking a, a lot recently about, um, and you kind of come at it from a different way, but the idea that Michael Lewis put forth of the, the fifth estate or the fifth yeah. risk, sorry, um, about how public service is being gutted, right? It's really mm -hmm. being demonized in this country. Um, you spend a lot of time as a public servant. Um, you know, certainly Southern District of New York is not going to be starved for quality law candidates, but there's a lot of districts out there. There's a lot of um, positions to be filled. What do you see as the current environment right now, and particularly young, young people, among young people, uh, their appetite to get into public service? How important is it for people to want to be public I think it's I think it's incredibly important. And one of the reasons I wrote the book, I had multiple reasons, but one of them was to show the world the nature, character, philosophy of the Southern District of New York. And it's much in the news now because they're overseeing and have overseen the Michael Cohen case, the case of the, the president's former lawyer. But you don't know the names of the people. You know, my name was a little bit known because my you know, name went mm -hmm. officially on all the indictments. But there's a lot of stories here about heroes, uh, investigators, prosecutors, other folks who just come to work every day to do the right thing in the right way for the right reasons to try to make their country and their community a little bit safer, a little bit better. And, and they really are the people who are so inspiring to me. And hopefully the book will not only make people who are, do other things um, feel good about the fact that there are all, all these great public servants whose names they might not have known before, but maybe inspire some young folks to go into public service too. Great. you talk about the distinction between justice and the law. Yeah. And I think that's something that you've been asked multiple times, even post-financial crisis, that no top executive was actually held to the fire. And you say, but we, uh, we at least conform to the law, but it might not be seen as justice. Tell me about that distinction and whether we should even be striving for justice then if the legal system isn't necessarily looking out for it. Yeah, well, the legal system is imperfect. And the, and the criminal justice system is not only imperfect, but it's also a very blunt instrument. You know, people have frustration about the financial crisis. I share that frustration. People have frustration about Bob Mueller, who a lot of people thought was going to make a determination about obstruction, determination about conspiracy. But the choice of a prosecutor is really binary. Do you have enough evidence to bring a case beyond a reasonable doubt, or do you not? And in between, you know, on the spectrum, there are lots of different ways you can find people blameworthy and want to hold them accountable and call them out for bad conduct, but the law doesn't necessarily permit that. And you have to understand, I had Brian Stevenson, who's a, who's a noted civil rights uh, lawyer and death penalty lawyer, explain it in a very simple way. He said, look, uh, if you missed the deadline for filing an appeal, uh, you know, and, and you, you didn't have the wherewithal to hire somebody who was good to, to file your appeal on your behalf, and you miss it by a day, uh, your appeal is ruled against. Right. That might be the law, but that is not necessarily justice. And so, you know, I think we should strive mm -hmm. to have not just our markets that you talk about all the time, but our legal system approximate justice as much as possible. And sometimes you have to change the law and change the, change the rules. But also, the main theme of the book is you have to make sure that the people who are responsible for enforcing and interpreting it are good people, too. Uh, can we talk about insider trading, just something that's sort sure. of in our wheelhouse a little bit. Uh, in the fall, you came out talking about a commission going to look at insider trading. And one of the things that you're talking about is that the law is, frankly, outdated, 
unclear what are the chances that it's going to change and is there a timeline because this is something you're trying to do right yeah so over the so it's a it, it's an interesting uh, task i have and i have a, a number of uh, very distinguished academics and practitioners in the defense side former prosecutor types people from the sec getting together putting our heads together to see if there are, there are proposals we can make to clarify insider trading law um, as people may appreciate you have securities laws which a lot of your your viewers will understand but there's no insider trading statute. Insider trading law is sort of a creature of, of what we say case law that says these things you can do and these things you can't do. And you know, I think it's important for there to be clarity, not just for the prosecutors to know when you've stepped over the line or for the regulators to know when you've stepped over the line, but also it's just in fairness, people who are working in the markets and are deciding whether or not they make a trade or sh share certain kinds of information, they should have clarity too. The rules should be bright and clear. Uh, that, that helps law enforcement and also helps, I think, people who are in the markets. So is it just that insider trading is the, the bluntest instrument, you know, you may use that phrase, that securities law offers to a prosecutor to bring a, to bring a case on those grounds, I guess? Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, we, we were very careful in all those cases we brought to make sure that the cases were clear um, and that there was no case that we brought where it was gray. People always talk about the gray area of insider trading. The result of there being gray area often is the prosecutors shy away from bringing a certain case. I mean, we were called very aggressive. I don't think we were overly aggressive. I think we were, we were tough. Um, but there are a lot of cases that weren't able to be brought because of the notion that you know, certain kinds of sharing of information uh, and certain benefits uh, in, in connection with giving information and making mm -hmm. trades was not crystal clear in the law, and I think it should be.